welcome back friends welcome to another video tutorial from Shomo's biology we've been talking about the glycogen metabolism and the steps of glycogen metabolism this is the third video of the series and in this video we are going to talk about the breakdown of glycogen to produce glucose molecules now the first question why we need that you know we've been looking at the balance between glycogen and glucose in our body the idea inside our body is we have two types of energetic state highly energetic state where we have ample amount and excess amount of glucose right after eating something and the second one is a low energetic state where we have less amount of glucose that we desire and need so what happens here when we are undergoing and going through the process of low energetic state when we don't have enough number of glucose molecules to support the need of energy production in our body we need to utilize a source a source where we earlier stored the glucose molecules as a form of complex branched carbohydrate polymer which was known as glycogen so normally at the highly energetic state when you have ex excess amount of glucose we convert it into the glycogen and store it there then in the low energetic state we can utilize the glycogen that is stored and we start using by breaking glycogen down and produce glucose molecules so that our body can replenish uh, the the energy that it requires now the thing is the idea in that case when we talk about uh, glucose glycogen breakdown so glycogen breakdown we also call it glycogeno glycogenolysis that is glycogenolysis that is lysis means breakdown glycogen so breakdown of glycogen or glycogenolysis so here what we are doing simply we are utilizing the glycogen so let's write it down glycogen normally the highly energetic state we store the glucose as glycogen structures in two types of tissues in liver as well as in muscle tissues now what we do both we utilize some enzymes in there and with the help of those enzymes we start breaking uh, the glycosidic bonds and glycosidic linkages that are present between each uh, glucose monomers and that will give us glucose one phosphate at the end now the thing is you know this is the end product of glycogenolysis so at the end of glycogenolysis you don't get glucose as as a product you'll get glucose one phosphate which is a, a very uh, small altered glucose molecule so what we can do this is an intermediate you can easily convert it back to the glucose 6 phosphate and once you convert glucose 1 phosphate into glucose 6 phosphate you know glucose 6 phosphate is an intermediate of glycolysis pathway so it can straight go through glycolysis and can produce ATP it can also produce this pyruvate and once it produce pyruvate you can also utilize it through the Krebs cycle and electron transport chain through aerobic respiration to produce energy that is the idea of glycogen breakdown or glycogenolysis now the thing is you know there should be a signal that tells the cell that produces the cell that the glycogen should be broken down to the glucose when it's required that signal acts as a form of hormone release the hormone is glucagon glucagon is a hormone which is secreted by alpha cells of pancreas and this alpha cell of pancreas secreting glucagon presence of glucagon hormone is going to activate several different types of cell signaling molecules inside the cell other signal transducer molecules which are mostly kinases uh, which has the ability to phosphorylate others and inactivating and activating them by phosphorylation ultimately glucagon produces a range a different chain of signaling that ultimately dictates uh, the activation of glycogen breakdown enzymes and we break glycogen down now in the second part of this video you are going to see an animation about how exactly glycogen is broken down with proper steps and the name of the enzymes so watch it through welcome back friends let's talk about glycogen and uh, the metabolism of glycogen Glycogen is a polymer of alpha 14 linked glucose with alpha 16 branches coming out of it. 
and these alpha 1 6 branches are visible after every 10 residues in repeats so it's mostly it's a polymer made up with glucose linked with each other okay and the bonds between the adjacent glucose are alpha 1 4 kind of linkage and the link that is present in the branch region it's alpha 1 6 linkage if you look at this picture it depicts it most more clearly normal branching is between normal additions of alpha 1 4 glucosidic or glycosidic bond and from the branch there's the alpha 1 6 bond and this 1 4 and 6 these are the number of carbon uh, in the sugar ring which are involved in the process of the bonding now liver uses glycogen as a reservoir for maintaining the blood glucose level in our body now it's very important that there is a constant supply of glucose to our cells so that they can utilize the glucose and use the glucose metabolism processes to develop energy now muscle uses glycogen as a reservoir for glucose uh, for energy production as well so let's move on and look at it in our details glycogen is built from a single starting point involving attachment of the first sugar to a small protein called glycogenin and the then the glycogen is found in as all granules inside the cytosols in uh, it's, it's stored inside the cytosol as granules it starts with the formation of that glycogenin which we will see now now the major glycogen degrading enzyme is glycogen phosphorylase if you phosphorylate one of this this is the glycogen we are looking if we can add a phosphate group to any of this uh, sugars in the glycogen it converts that sugar into glucose one phosphate and attaches the phosphate to the first carbon position of the glucose and once it attaches this phosphate group to the carbon number one it de degrades that sugar out it detaches the sugar out from the rest of the chain that is the beauty of the degradation of glycogen now the situation in our body is different once we eat food we have plenty of glucose present in our blood and second thing is once we are starving when the blood glucose level falls down so when the blood glucose level falls down we need to take use and advantage of the glycogens that are stored inside the cell we need to break each of those glucose down in small fragments into as as glucose one phosphate then we convert that glucose one phosphate into other intermediate steps and then finally we convert them uh, to the process through glycolysis and Krebs cycle uh, to ultimately produce energy from it now there are two steps of this process either glycogen breakdown and the glycogen formation now the idea is when we are starving we need to break down stored glycogen to produce glucose and we are second situation when we are uh, having a plenty of glucose present in our blood excess amount of glucose present in our blood right after a carbohydrate rich meal or any other meal that glucose should be stored inside the cell by converting them into glycogen polymer okay now the glycogen breakdown which we are looking at here is mediated by the enzyme glycogen phosphorylase it requires the pyridoxal phosphate or PLP uh, that is a cofactor pyridoxal phosphate it requires this PLP for its activity and it also uses inorganic phosphate to split those 1,4 glycosidic bond to make glucose 1-phosphate that I told you earlier so if you zoom in this picture what you will find we attach a phosphate group with the help of this PLP or pyridoxal phosphate as a cofactor the enzyme glycogen phosphorylase can actually add this single phosphate group to the growing uh, chain and as it attaches this phosphate in one of the terminal glucose in the carbon number one position as the glycogen is presented by alpha one fold linkage that gets broken so we get glucose one phosphate cleaved out from the rest of the chain that's how uh, the process begins now the key point for this step and this is in, in non-hepatic tissues sugars released uh, and uh, it is transported and trapped in cell since it is phosphorylated okay but in hepatic tissue that's not the case hepatic tissue means the liver cells now the PLP is derivative of vitamin B6 
okay and phosphorylase can actually only work until four units from a branch point so if it's breaking some portion of this uh, glucose one at a time it's it's attaching a phosphate group breaking glucose one at a time it can only work till maximum up to the the four new four glucose that are being attached so for example if you look at this picture there are five glucose in the branch start breaking the first glucose out now there are four remaining now once there are four remaining this enzyme cannot work further it can work from let's say there are 100 glucose in the branch it can easily break down all those glucose and until this four glucose is linked to the branch because once it comes down to four glucose uh, this glycogen phosphorylase is not enough to break them that's another important feature okay now the chemical process in the reaction you can simply tell as glycogen as n number of glucose after this bond breakage we produce a glucose 1 phosphate and the glycogen chain becomes n minus 1 so one glucose is released now that glucose 1 phosphate that we produce after that this glucose 1 phosphate can be converted into glucose 6 phosphate and glucose 6 phosphate is an intermediate of glycolysis so it will be directly feeded into the glycolysis pathway this is how the glucose 1 phosphate converted to glucose 6 phosphate with the help of an enzyme known as phosphoglucomutase now that's the small change of the phosphate's position in the glucose it changes the phosphate's position from carbon number 1 to carbon number 6 that's only the modification and the cofactors that we require for this process to occur is 1 6 biphosphoglucose that's also act as a cofactor there now the conversion of one phosphate of the glucose to the six uh, glucose six phosphate is freely reversible and it's also important in utilization of the galactose that's also another type of sugar okay so in this case this is also similar mechanism to phosphoglyceromutase which needs glucose 1 6 bisphosphate as a cofactor to keep the enzyme in the active phosphorylated form because once the enzyme in activated form it's phosphorylated and if the enzyme is phosphorylated it can mediate the process of transferring the phosphate from one carbon to the sixth carbon now it's about the degradation of the branch points because as I told you earlier here we see the end, uh, addition of two different enzymes transferase and debranching enzymes to involve uh, with this process so what does that mean if we if you see like as I told you earlier the glu glu glycogen phosphorylase enzyme it can cleave uh, the glucose from the terminal end but it will stop once there is only four glucose left in the branch point so at that point they need to rely on two separate enzymes to break this branch point one is the transferase enzyme uh, which switches the uh, residues near the branch point to the neighboring chain so what they will do this transferase it will cleave one of these it will cleave the multiple residues of glucose and transfer it to the main chain because if you consider this is a main chain and this smaller one as you see here is a branch so we take glucose from the branch and transfer them to the main chain with the help of this transferase enzyme and secondly there is another enzyme called deep branching enzyme which finally degrades the 1,6 glycosidic bond it, bro it breaks this 1,6 glycosidic linkage and then it will free the last glucose that was present and that actually produced as a glucose it's not glucose 1 phosphate guys because we are not using the glycogen phosphorylase anymore so transferase will start transferring the fragments to the growing main chain till the last glucose and then the debranching enzyme will come it will cleave the bond the glycosidic bond that is alpha 1 6 glycosidic bond between uh, the branch point and the branch point is also broken so that glucose is released freely and it can be readily utilized by the cell okay so if you like this video please hit the like button subscribe to my channel to make it grow and also make more and more videos like this for you and also share this video with every friend and also in every social networking sites thank you